Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. We're doing another Bible study, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. If you'd like me to come speak at your church or if you have any questions, you can email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com. So we're going to start on 1 Corinthians chapter 3 at the end of it. In verse 20, it says, And again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. He's basically saying that even the people that are really smart have really bad thoughts. So we can't trust in men because we're all sinners. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And yet you are Christ's and Christ is God's. So they're basically saying that it doesn't matter who you are. You're still a child of a child of Christ, and you know, you know we we all make mistakes, but we have to sit there and be we have to be open to our mistakes so we can grow. First Corinthians four verse one: Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the ministry of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So he's saying that we are all children of God if you if you're saved and so you're required to be a steward you're, you're required to follow God and to teach others about God so you can be found faithful but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment yea I judge not mine own self for I know nothing by myself yet I am not hereby justified but he that judges me is the Lord's so it's saying that you know you could you could judge other people you could judge yourself, but at the end of the day, God has the final judgment. Everybody has this idea that I'm not so bad, I'm not like that guy. But at the end of the day, we're all going to be judged by God. The word justified, it basically means just if I'd never sinned. It's 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 uh, being being understood that you know you're not. You're not the one guilty. You, what happened to you, has came to a to a close, and it's a good thing. Just if I've never sinned. All throughout the Bible, it uses the word justified, and the word justified basically means having done for, or marked by a good or legitimate reason, or theology reason will be declared or made righteous to the sight of God. So, you could be a you could be a filthy rotten sinner. And if you're saved, God's going to see you as justified because he's going to see Christ on you. So even though you made mistakes, you're going to be justified. But we're still responsible for our actions. In Luke and Acts and Romans, it uses the word justified. It talks about being justified. All throughout Romans, you got to be justified. About down Romans and 1 Corinthians. It's also being justified. You know, justified never sinned. Galatians. All throughout the Bible, the word justified is used. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the court the Lord comes. Who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. He's basically saying that there's people in the world that might get away with stuff, but at the end, Christ is going to come down and judge everybody. So, regardless of what you see other people doing, you need to be a Christ follower. You need to do what's right. And these things, brethren, I have a figure transferred to myself and Apollos for your sake. That you may learn in us not to think of men above what is written, that no one of you is puffed up but of one against another. You know, sometimes in churches we see that people that are so called, you know, good followers of Christ, the thing is, we don't see what they are in their personal life. And some of these people might look good in the church, but when they go in the real world, they're not so good. They make mistakes, they do things that are bad. Everybody sins. So don't look at this guy saying, oh, he's better than me, or, or oh, look, I'm better than them, because none of us is really worthy. 
So it's saying, don't think of men and women as above what is what is written. None of you be puffed up. Because at the end of the day, Christ is going to come down and judge us all. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou done to, that does not receive? Now it does receive it. Why does thou glory? As if thou had not received it. Now ye are full, now ye are rich. Ye have resigned as kings without us. And would God ye reign, that may also reign with you. He's saying that we're all gonna we're all gonna have our, our our day at the end. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, meek or it doesn't matter. At the end, we're gonna get our reward. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as we are appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and the men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but we are wise in Christ. We are weak, but yet we are strong. We are honorable, yet we despise. See, the world looks at these people. The world, the world looks at followers of Christ as, you guys don't get it. If you want to succeed, you have to do X, Y, and Z. You guys are saying, oh, I'm going to turn the other cheek. I'm going to be weaker. But yet they don't understand the reward we're going to have at the end. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor and work it with our own hands, being reviled, be blessed, being persecuted, we suffer it. So it doesn't matter if we're hungry, if we're thirsty, if we don't have a place to st place to stay, if we if we work really hard and people make fun of us, and we we honor God and we're persecuted for it. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we're going to have the reward. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made of the filth of the world. We are the outskirt of all these things until the day. I write not these things to shame you, but my beloved sons, I warn you. It's saying the world is going to attack us. But yet, when it's all said and done, we're going to have our reward. We're going to get to go to heaven. We're going to be happy. For though we have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet we have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be followers of me. So do what I'm doing. It doesn't matter if they put you in jail. It doesn't matter if they beat you. It doesn't matter if they make fun of you. Do like I'm doing, which is it's just Paul saying, we're going to just keep pressing on for Christ because at the end of the day, it's going to be worth it. For this cause I have sent you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful to the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which are in Christ, as I teach everywhere in the church. The word remembrance is really important. We have to remember where we came from. We have to remember what's going on. And Paul's saying in here, remember my ways, which be in Christ. Remember that no matter what happened, I followed God. All throughout the Bible, it talks about remembering, that I will remember. Revelations 2, verse 1 says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, for these things have you hold of the seven stars in the right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and how thou hast not tried them which said they are apostles that are not, and have found them liars. And is born and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. He's saying, you guys are doing all these great things, but you guys forgot your first love. Remember, therefore, from whence you are fallen, and repent, and do thy first works, or else I will come unto thee quick, and I remove thy candlestick out of this place, except they repent. He's saying, remember where you came from. Remember when you were a horrible, filthy, rotten sinner, and then I came and I saved you? Remember when... You were not doing God's work, and I came and I saved you. And I remember when cassettes first, first were uh, introduced. Well, in 1962, the, it was first invented. But I remember that was a pinnacle. That was the pinnacle of music. I can listen to music. I can fast forward. I can rewind. I can listen to the radio and record my music on there. And then you got real fancy, and you got this really nice player where you could record off the player. You could record other CD or other cassettes. I remember it was the pinnacle. It was amazing. And now it's useless. Now nobody even knows what it is. 1 Corinthians 4. For this cause I've sent to you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful to the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, 
which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Remember where you came from. Remembrance is important. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not to speak to them which are puffed up with the power. So some of you guys are all thinking you're better than everybody else, and you guys don't think I'm going to come back, but I'm going to come back. He says, I will come to you shortly. And I will know, I will know who these people are who are acting like they're puffed up. You know, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18, 19 says, For the preaching of the Christ is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The preaching of the cross is what's important. And if you don't preach the cross, people are going to be foolish. If you don't understand what Christ did for you, you're basically a fool. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolishness of the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believed. See, if you're not going to believe what God said, God makes you foolish. And the foolishness of preaching, you see, if we don't preach Christ, if we don't teach people who Christ is, it's foolishness. We have to tell people who God is so they can get saved. And if you don't, it's foolish. Back to 1 Corinthians 4. For the kingdom of God is not in the world, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love and the spirit of meekness? God's saying, are you going to follow my ways so I can come to you in love? Or are you going to reject me and fight me, and i got to come with a rod? Which one would you rather have me do? You know, I saw this billboard that says, don't make me come down there, God. Don't make me come down there. You're not going to like it. You see, if God has to come down here and settle the score and judge us all, we're not going to like it. Even the people that think they're following God properly, they're not going to like it because God's still going to tell us what we did wrong. Don't make me come down there. I'll bust you up. You know, God's going to come down one day and he's going to say, you made these mistakes. And we're going to say, you know what, you're right. I made these mistakes and that's why I accepted Jesus because I am a filthy, rotten sinner. You can't say, well, I'm going to debate God and tell him how wrong he is. You know, I've said for a long time, there's four different kinds of people in the world. And we're kind of going to talk about three of them. There's people that go out there and they preach the gospel. They're out there. They're on the front lines. They're the guys with the guns. They're, 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 they're taking down the bad guys. They're preaching the gospel. They're out there doing the work. This is hello there. There's a work going on. For the souls of men, find something to do. Are you going to be the guy out there in the front lines battling the enemy? Or are you going to be one of those guys as a support? If you're not going to shoot, at least carry the bullets for the guy that will. You see, you can carry the bullets for the guys in the front line. You can help them with their journey. Or you can pay for the bullets for the guy that will shoot. You see, you could be out there on the front lines. You could be out there preaching the gospel, being an evangelist, being a preacher, talking to people on the streets. Or you could help the guy out by carrying all of his heavy load. Or you could pay for the bullets. I mean, the very works you could do is be a bad example. Chick tracks. They sell these tracks. They're, they're amazing. They're, they're these great tracks. There's all these different thoughts. And you could take those and you could give them to people. You can lay them places. Uh, it's something you could do to at least get the gospel out. I, I really like I really like chick tracks. You can you can take care of the wounded. You could you could be one of those people that says, okay, you're out there preaching, you're out there doing your thing. You know, I'm gonna let you stay in my house. I'm gonna feed you. I'm gonna go ahead. And, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy you some 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 hard candies or some holes. So that way, when you speak so much, your throat doesn't hurt so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that you're taken care of because we need people out there preaching. And not everybody's made for that, but you can carry the bullets. You can help the wounded. You can pay for the bullets. You can do all these different things. 1 Corinthians 4.20 
For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, in the spirit of meekness? Do you want God to come down with love, or do you want God to come down with a rod? At the Last Supper, Peter's talking to Jesus in John 21. It says, Then Peter, Peter turning about, seeing the disciple, who Jesus loved following, which also leaned to his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? And Jesus said unto him, If if I will that he carry, if I that he will tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thee, follow thee me. He's saying, it doesn't matter who's going to betray me. It doesn't matter who he is or what he's going to do. He's going to do his thing. Your job is to follow me. Your job is to learn from me. Your job is to be my disciple. It doesn't matter about everybody else. Worry about yourself. Your job is to follow me and teach others about me. Well, guys, that's the video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, you can send me an email and you can comment below. Make sure you guys haven't, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Like and share this if you know somebody that's going to be interested in it. On the bottom right of the screen, I'm going to have the First Corinthians Bible Study. The top left of the screen is going to be the, I believe, Luke Bible Study. And then the bottom left is going to be a video that YouTube thinks you're going to like. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.